Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. I am Brian and today we're going to be taking a look at this Timgot 100 amp hour LiPo 4 12.8 volt battery. I'm doing a review on this particular battery gang because it's got quite a few features built in on it that are pretty intriguing and I wanted to, to get it in the shop here. I wanted to test it out and see how it works because after reviewing quite a few regular batteries it kind of gets to be a little boring but this guy has quite a few features in it that I want to show you. So to start off with again just your standard 12.8 volt 100 amp hour LiPo 4 battery. It's got a five year warranty on it. You're gonna get between 3,500 and 5,000 charge cycles before you get to 80%, yada, 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 like every other battery that I reviewed. However, this has an LCD screen up top that I'll bring in closer and show you. So you can actually monitor this battery from the top of the lid here. Really nice display, so we'll go into that. It's got a Bluetooth app built into it, so you can monitor not only from the lid, if you're around this battery, you can monitor it via an app and check the state of charge, look at each individual cell, check the voltage of each cell, check the cycle count, check the charge current, check the discharge current, on and on with the app. And this battery also claims to have a self-heating function that will heat up the, the cells inside the battery if this thing goes below 32 degrees Fahrenheit. We're gonna find a way to test that to make sure that it works. But first, let me bring you in and show you the top screen, which is kind of one of the big features of this battery, and kind of show you how that works. Okay, so the screen is obviously not turned on. There's a little power button here that you're gonna press, and it cuts on the LCD screen. And it's got three different pages of items that you can go look at. So here, it's gonna show my state of charge, which is at 67%. It's gonna show the current, the voltage, the temperature of the internal batteries, the time to empty, which is right now is 999 hours because I'm not discharging anything. And believe it or not, gang, this is actually a touch screen. So this is page one. You can go in here to page two and it's gonna give you your cycle count, your max temp, your min temp. And then on page three, this is gonna show you each cell and the voltage of each cell. So mainly you are just gonna worry about page one, which is gonna give you the state of charge and the voltage and the current and the output and all that good stuff. So. The LCD screen is, is really quite, quite nice on this battery. If you're around this battery, you wanna see the state of charge, you can just come up here quickly, turn it on and see your state of charge. To turn the screen off, you press and hold for a few seconds and it powers off. But I'm gonna cut this thing back on. So I wanna make sure that this 13.31 voltage that the screen is telling me this battery is at actually matches my multimeter. So let me get this where you guys can see it. And let's test it. 13.37 on my multimeter, 13.31 on my LCD screen. So fairly close. We're off by a few, but uh, nothing that I would honestly be too concerned about. And not only does this screen help give you information on the battery, but it also has a Bluetooth app. So I've downloaded the app. You don't have to create a login for this one, which is great. If you do create a login, you can go in and do a few more uh, tweaks and settings in the app. However, I don't want to put in any kind of my information for an app like this, but um, you can go into find the battery and it's going to connect to this battery. And again, right now this is showing the state of charge at 67%, which matches my LCD screen. It is showing 13.31 volts, which matches my LCD screen. And this actually has all of the four individual cells inside this case and the voltage of each cell. So just a, you know, it's, I would consider it a bare bones app, but it's gonna give you basically all the information that any of us would ever want or, or really ever need. So you got some BMS info, your firmware version, device name, yada, kind of boring stuff. Uh, your charging low temp times, your over temp times, how many times this battery's been over temperature, over discharged short circuit, how many times you've, you've, you've tripped the BMS on this thing. And yeah, that's basically it for the app. But again, if, you're, if you can't get to this battery, you can remotely log into it and look at it with an app. All right, so let me try to explain how this heating element inside this battery works because I personally was a little bit confused because I thought that these heated batteries actually use the internal cells in here to power on the, we'll call it a heating blanket around the cells, which I didn't think made much sense because it would end up discharging itself trying to heat itself below 32 degrees. How it works is, is that whatever source you have to charge this battery, whether it's the AC grid, whether it's solar panels, the battery uses that 
to charge the heating pads in here until the internal temperature gets above 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So keep that in mind, it does not use the internal batteries to self heat. It uses your charging source, your external charging source to heat that blanket up inside until again, these batteries get above 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, a couple of things to note, it will not turn on the heating function unless it has at least 10 amps worth of charging input coming from again, AC or solar or however, or a generator, however you're charging your batteries, you have to have at least 10 amps. Once you have at least 10 amps and this battery is below freezing, the battery will use that juice, heat up that heating blanket, warm up the internals of this battery to above 32 degrees Fahrenheit, and begin charging the actual cell. So this battery is going to kind of switch over from taking that input juice and heating up the, the blankets in here to using that juice to charge the actual battery. So you're not using any capacity off of this battery. Now the heating pad in this case will continue to heat and stay on until it gets to around 41 to 42 degrees Fahrenheit inside, then it'll completely shut itself off. So that's kind of neat. I didn't know how these things work, but um, the main takeaway is you have to have at least 10 amps worth of input into this battery for these heating pads inside to actually turn on, work, and heat up the cells inside. So the way that we're gonna test this gang is I'm gonna stick this battery back here in my little 12 volt cooler that I have set to 20 degrees Fahrenheit. We're gonna let this battery get below freezing and then we're gonna put in around 20 amps worth of charge to see if that heating element actually does work and if it raises the temperature of the internal cell to a temperature above 32 degrees so this battery will actually start charging. That's my plan, let's see if it works. Oh, it doesn't, oh wait. Ooh, that's a tight fit, but it fits. So I'm gonna come back in about an hour. I'll show you folks the temperature inside to make sure that we're cooling. And I'm actually gonna stick this thermometer right on top of the battery so we can easily see what we're at here in about an hour. And then it's gonna probably take quite a few hours to get the internal batteries to below freezing, but this is gonna be the test. Okay, so this has been hooked up to the charger for about 16 minutes now. And check it out, we are at 0.8 degrees Celsius. That little uh, red flashing icon up there is showing that it is still not currently charging. However, that 20 amps worth of charging juice is heating that up and we're up to 0.7 degrees Celsius now. So the heating element actually in this battery actually is working, which is pretty cool. So really all we need, oh, and it just went to 0.6 while I'm sitting there talking to you folks. So when this gets to zero degrees Celsius, that is 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So when that happens, this battery should start to accept this 20 amps worth of charge that's coming in and actually begin charging the battery. So that's gonna be interesting to see. And we're at 0.5 now. So I think I'm just gonna hang out here because it's, it's, it's going a lot faster than I thought that it would. So I'm just gonna hang out here until we get to, to zero degrees. And now we just raised it up a little bit more to 0.4 degrees Celsius. So we're not and I just wanna show you folks, if I hit this power button, you can see here, if I go to page two, that the charge icon is actually off. So it is not accepting a charge right now. Go back to page one. Let me close this so it stays cold. And we're at 0.1 degrees Celsius now. Okay, so did a little bit more reading in the manual and it states here that once the internal temperature gets to five degrees Celsius, this battery should start charging. So we're still climbing up. I'm at 0 0.8 degrees Celsius right now. So we've got four more degrees to rise up until that battery starts to charge. And we'll just take a quick temp check. 26 degrees in there. Okay, 27 minutes later, we're up to 3.1 degrees Celsius. And I just saw that my original clip of me showing you hooking up this charger to this thing. I didn't have audio on it, but we started at around negative five degrees Celsius. So in 30 minutes after hooking up this charger, it's been heating up those heating blankets inside the battery for again, for about 30 minutes. And it's raised it up a good eight degrees. We're at 3.2 degrees now. And so once the internal temperature again gets to five degrees Celsius, we should be able to start charging. So obviously we're not now, I've still got the red indicator showing that it is not accepting a charge. We are at 3.3 degrees internal temperature Celsius. So 
We've only got about a degree and a half to get up to before this battery should start charging, but I'm pretty amazed that this thing actually does work. It's pretty cool. 4.7 degrees Celsius, and notice that the battery is still at 67% state of charge. So it hasn't used an ounce of energy from the battery cells to warm itself up. We're at 4.8 degrees Celsius now. So in two tenths of a degree, this thing should start charging. Five degrees Celsius, okay. What's gonna happen? We're still not charging. There we go. Look at that. It is now taking a charge. That is super cool. We're at 5.1 degrees Celsius internal. And we are charging. And it's only taken around 13.29 amps right now because again, remember this battery will continue to heat itself until it gets to around 42 degrees Fahrenheit internally, then it's gonna cut down the heating blanket. So that's why I'm not getting full power off of my little charger over here. It's because it is still using some of that juice to keep those heating blankets warmed up, but that is awesome. So now let's take a look here on the screen. I know this is upside down, but yep, now it's showing on for the charge toggle. So it is definitely charging. All right, well, I just pulled this out of the cooler and I can feel the heat on the bottom of this battery. 126.9 degrees is what the bottom of this battery is showing on this temp gauge. So I can definitely feel, feel the heat. The sides are cold. 28 degrees on the side. So 100 degrees warmer underneath this battery is what's warming up those internal cells to accept that charge. That is super cool. Okay, so I don't know, I, I admit I geek out. I don't know why I think that's so cool, but I've never had a self-heating battery in the shop here before and I was really curious about how it worked. And I think it's pretty cool how it actually heats itself up to a safe charging temperature inside. I don't know, I just think it's kind of cool. Now I'm not gonna do the capacity test or discharge test. I've done that a hundred times. If you guys really want to see it, let me know in the comments and I'll, and I'll put a short out there, a short video uh, showing you the, the capacity rating of this thing. But every battery that I've ever gotten here in the shop has gotten at least the rated capacity. And as far as the 100 amp BMS, I've always been able to pull at least 100, 100 amps. I really just wanted to test out the self heating function on this battery and to see how it works. And I was a little bit surprised how well it did work. So it took around 30 minutes to take this battery from negative 5.4 degrees Celsius up to five degrees Celsius. And then this battery started charging itself. Now, the only thing that kind of worries me about this is the fact that it takes 10 amps. So if you are just running solar, Sometimes it's hard to get 10 amps of solar depending on your array. So if you're just running a 100 watt or 200 watt solar panel, you're gonna have a hard time getting 10 amps input into this battery from those panels. If you have a large array, no problem. Um, but if you're charging from your AC wall grid or from a generator, 10 amps really is not gonna be any type of issue. Or the converter in your RV, 10 amps is, is not gonna be anything to worry about getting into this battery. But if you're just on solar, you might wanna think about it. Um, I do know Bouge RV has a self-heating battery and I believe it only takes or requires 60 watts to turn on those self-heating blankets. So a little bit less requirement in terms of wattage than this Tim got. But that's my only kind of concern about this is that it takes uh, 10 amps to get those heating blankets to, to turn on to start heating it. But I don't know. It worked well. It worked better than I thought that it would. I, I don't know what I was expecting, but uh, I was I was pretty pleased with it. Now I'll leave a link for this battery down in the description below. Um, they're currently sold out on Amazon, so I do not know what the price is, but I will leave a link to their actual website if you guys want to check it out. I'm not an affiliate of Tim Got. I don't get any money from them if you go buy this battery, but I'm just going to make it easy for you to go find it if you think this is something that you might need. But Anyway, folks, until next time, thanks so much for watching and take care. We will see you soon.